time. It seems to be the biggest thing in our lives that drives us. We don't have enough time, we have too much time, we waste our time. As they say, time waits for no man. But today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of different things, and it has everything to do with time. I have a question for all of you out there. If you only needed to feed your lawn one time a year, would you do it? Or are you a person that just does that anyway? We're going to get into a couple of different things that are very interesting. Some to do with these long, long, slow release fertilizers, and some just to do with the behaviors of people. So let's take a look at a couple of things here. Before I get into these duration type fertilizers, I want to talk about something else. And this is something that has sort of plagued the pro industry for a long time. And it's really interesting because it's definitely a mindset more than anything else. Since I started doing YouTube a few years ago, I have learned a lot about the type of community that's online versus the real world. And as time goes on, you're gonna hear me really separate out those two entities because they are very, very different. So one of the things that has sort of plagued the pro side of the industry is when people start looking to buy lawn care and the application schedule or the amount of applications given to them, they always say the same thing. Why do I need so many applications? I only ever feed my lawn once. Well, generally the answer is something like this. That's why your lawn looks so bad and why you're asking for professional help. I never really look too deeply into that comment, but it's something that's come up over and over and over again. And then to take it a step further, the professional side and the DIY side seem to have this sort of headbutting idea about who's doing what and who's causing the most problems. Now we see this all in the legislature and things that are happening in different parts of the country where herbicides are getting banned or insecticides are getting banned and even fertilizers are getting banned and it brings up a very interesting tale. So let me tell you a little bit about it. For the last while I've been asking pretty much anybody, not just people online, not people who are just sending in for soil tests, things like that, but just general people. How do you typically fertilize your lawn? How do you typically take care of your yard? What is your pattern for things? Now, most people will do this, most, and I'm talking like 99% of the respondents go like this. These are real world people. They go in the springtime, they buy their bag of fertilizer, they put it out. And that's the end of the story. There's really nothing else beyond that, which is very, very interesting. Because here we have these concepts of these people just misapplying and throwing things all over the place, heavy applications, things like that, which just isn't the case. Yes, for a lot of people, they're gonna put a whole bag down of whatever it is, if it's too much or too little over their lawn because that's just the way it is. Nobody's really going to get in and dive deep and look and see exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It's buy the furt, put it out. This is a task, it's not a skill. So that's something to really take a look at. But most of you are not that person. Most of you out there like to do a lot more. You like to get into it a little bit more. You like to go a bit deeper. You like to find out more and you like to apply more and you like to be on your lawn more. But this is not how most people are. So then that leads me to the question. If we take the whole group, this, this big group of people who just do this once a year application, and really break that down into the numbers, it's very reflective in the way that fertilizer sales are in the course of the year as well. The bulk of them happen between March 15th and really about June 15th, and that's it. After that, sales go way down. You can look at any trend line on any fertilizer company and that's just how it goes. Springtime is for fertilizer, and then that's it. So how do we change that concept? Maybe we don't have to. I think that's why that there's more and more going into these one app type fertilizers. And that brings me to the duration. So if you haven't heard of these one app type fertilizers, duration is one of the ones that's out there. And I do know a few pros who have gone that way and are using it on their lawn care customers. Well, let's talk a little bit about it and see if we can look into it a little deeper. I imagine that most of you are pretty familiar with polymer coatings on fertilizer. It's not anything new, but now the way that they're being made, there is more flexibility in the material. So basically, we have a polymeric compound that goes over the top of whatever fertilizer they are trying to encapsulate, here showing urea. So as it moves through the phases, it starts like this. Within a week of the application, soil moisture penetrates the polymer coating through osmosis. Encapsulated nutrients are dissolved, but they are not released. That takes a little more time. Over time, the dissolved nutrients slowly release through diffusion in response to temperature and coating thickness. 
After the complete release of nutrients, the polymer coating eventually decomposes by microbial activity into naturally occurring elements. So that pretty much describes the functionality of everything, but there is one statement on here that I think is good to take a look at. If you look closely, you'll see that all of these tests were done at a temperature of 68 degrees. There are real world field trials out there, but this is just something to pay attention to. Mother Nature is going to throw everything it can at you to change your situation no matter what you do, and there's very little we can do to cheat it. So if we're going to get optimum nutrient release, it would have to be at this temperature. And we know that as summer goes on, that ain't the case. So there you have it. It's very interesting. I'm not sure that the industry is fully ready to adopt that, even though there are people out there who are using it on a regular basis. And I know that just for the expense of it, the average homeowner probably isn't going to jump on a $150 bag when you might even need two of them to do a medium-sized lawn. It starts to get pretty expensive and you might as well hire a service. So therein lies the question. If you did have the opportunity to only go one time a year, would you take it? I think many of you wouldn't. I'm starting to think that the general public might. And if that's the case, maybe there's a better way to have people fertilizing more often, easier, without the work. Because it's starting to sound to me like time is the biggest issue. Now we're gonna get a little bit more into that in another video. Make sure to check your feed. And before long, it'll be right here to choose from as well. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.